This is a lecture on the cell cycle. I have attached a document that looks similar to this slide here. Um, you should you print this out and fill it in as we go through the lecture. It will help you to understand the contents and also to kind of organize your notes as you go through the unit. Um, we're going to start today with talking about non-sex cells, also called somatic cells. These are all of the cells that your body is composed of, your skin, muscles, your blood cells and your bone cells are all somatic cells. The only types of cells that are not somatic are sex cells, gametes, which are egg and sperm. Any other cell is considered somatic. And the life cycle of a cell is referred to as the cell cycle. So as the cell progresses through its life stages, it each of those stages has a name and there are specific things that happen during each of those phases. Interphase is the longest phase of the cell cycle. And interphase contains G1, S, and G2. During interphase, the first stage is G1, and that is where we see the normal growth and metabolic fun functions of the cell. On your diagram, G1 is shown here. This is the first stage that it goes into after uh, the last cell division. Normal metabolic functions just means that it's doing its normal cell thing. It's doing whatever that cell should be doing. The second stage after G1 is DNA replication. And DNA replication is when a cell makes a copy of its DNA. DNA replication is shown on this pie piece here. That's called the S stage. S stands for synthesis because more DNA is being synthesized. The cell will only go into this stage if there is a checkpoint that is passed, shown here on this diagram, that shows that the cell needs to go ahead and duplicate its DNA. If the cell does not need to divide, it will not go into the S stage because it won't need to make a copy of its DNA if it's not going to divide. After S comes G2. G2 is where there's energy stored to prepare for division, there's more cell growth, and more normal metabolic function. G2 is represented here on this chart. All three of those stages, G1, S, and G2, are called interphase. After interphase, the cell will go into its division stage called mitosis. And mitosis is also broken down into several stages. Before we get into mitosis, I'd like to go over the anatomy of a chromosome, or the different terms that are used in reference to our DNA at different stages of the cell cycle. Chromatin is what the DNA, the form DNA is in during interphase. It is in its relaxed form. It looks very much like spaghetti, shown here. The chromatin is kind of unwound and very loosely condensed inside of the nucleus. This is how it is always seen through all of G1, S, and G2, or all of interphase, the longest stage of the cell cycle. Once that DNA condenses, it turns into a chromosome. And when it's duplicated, we refer to a chromosome as having two chromatids, sometimes called sister chromatids. Each chromatid is an exact copy of the other one. So this yellow half of this yellow half of the chromosome, that's one chromatid, is an exact copy of this blue side, which is another sister chromatid. They are attached together at the central mirror, as shown in this diagram. They are exact copies of one another. A chromosome is any time that there is condensed DNA, but there's two types of chromosomes. Chromosomes can be either duplicated or unduplicated. A duplicated, duplicated chromosome is shaped like an X, as seen here. That's when the chromatin is very wound up and condensed. Each side is a duplicate of one another, one side being a chromatid, the other side is a chromatid, and together they make a complete chromosome. This is a different picture of the same thing. This is one chromosome. One side is a sister chromatid, and they're connected together at the centromere. An unduplicated chromosome is when there's only one copy of the DNA, so it looks like a line. That's seen in this one here, and over here on this side. That's still a chromosome, as this is a chromosome. However, this is unduplicated, and this is duplicated. Both of them are referred to as chromosomes. So as soon as the chromosome splits, the, what used to be called sister chromatids are now their own individual chromosome. You will hear these terms throughout the rest of the lecture, referring to the different stages in the cell, in the cell cycle in the mitosis portion. The first stage of mitosis, which is cell division, is prophase. 
during prophase, the original DNA, which is the chromatin, copy and is already copied, that's the chromatid, starts to condense into chromosomes. So throughout interphase, it's in the loose form or its chromatin form, and then in prophase, it condenses into chromosomes. At this stage, we also see the centrioles move toward the opposite poles of the cell. Those are the churro-looking bits right there. The nuclear envelope starts to break down, which is why it's shown as a dotted line in the illustration, and the mitotic apparatus forms. That's the spindle fibers. The next stage is metaphase. In metaphase, the spindle fibers attach, and they line, the chromosomes line up along the center, or the equator of the cell. Just like the Earth has an equator around the center, the cell has an equator around the center where the chromosomes line up. After metaphase comes anaphase, and that is where the sister chromatids separate from each other along the centromere, and they move to opposite poles of the cell. Now that the sister chromatids are no longer attached, they are each their own individual chromosome, and they are pulled along the spindle fibers till they reach the poles of the cell. After that comes telophase. Telophase is when we the chromosomes reach the poles of the cell, so the cell begins to pinch in half. It creates what we call a cleavage furrow in animal cells, or a cell plate in plant cells. Since the cell plant cells are much more rigid, they're not able to squish down and form that cleavage furrow to pinch off. So instead, a cell plate is formed, and that's shown here, forming in between the two nuclei. Also in this stage, the DNA relaxes back into chromatin, and a new nuclear envelope forms, seen as this squiggly line here. If you look back on the diagram from the beginning, here, here, this is would be representing prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. All of these together compose mitosis. After mitosis is complete, the cell now goes into cytokinesis, which is the division of the rest of the cell. Mitosis is only the division of the nucleus, cytokinesis is when the rest of the cell divides. So now that the DNA is copied, into daughter, copied and moved into separate daughter nuclei, the rest of the cell, like the organelles in the cytoplasm, can now divide. That is seen on this piece of the diagram right here, cytokinesis. That concludes this cell cycle lecture. Please scroll down and complete the assignments for the remainder of the week. Contact your instructor through a message if you have any questions. Thank you.